Matthew Alvarez, a broadcaster at Right Side Broadcasting Network, interrupted programming ahead of a Donald Trump rally in Pennsylvania to clarify his stance on violent statements made by a Trump supporter. The supporter mentioned kill them all in reference to globalists and Renos. Alvarez initially appeared to agree, but later stated he did not hear those words and did not support violence. His fellow host supported his clarification, emphasizing the importance of accurate context. Text messages from 2018 between Hunter Biden and his friend Devin Archer reveal their reaction to a judge throwing out Archer's conviction. Hunter expressed relief and joked about the Department of Justice, stating they would have the last laugh. Archer is reportedly preparing to testify about President Biden's interactions with Hunter's business associates during his time as vice president. The judge ruled that evidence against Archer did not prove his knowledge of fraud or personal benefit. Phoenix endures its 31st day of temperatures above 110A degree F, while a California wildfire spreads into Nevada, and another threatens border communities in Washington state and Canada. The UN's World Meteorological Organization highlights climate change as a key factor behind the surge in extreme weather events. Studies show human-caused climate change contributes to increased wildfire risk and unprecedented heat waves in various countries. The prolonged heat wave impacts low-income residents, while red flag warnings remain in effect for parts of the U.S. A mass shooting at a block party in Muncie, Indiana, resulted in one person dead and at least 19 others injured. The incident occurred early Sunday morning, and multiple agencies responded to provide assistance. Some victims suffered critical injuries and were transferred to other medical facilities. Police confirmed that there was no active threat to the community. The deceased victim was identified as Joseph E. Bonner III, age 30. In South Korea, debates over banning dog meat consumption have escalated as activists and politicians call for an end to the practice. While it's not explicitly illegal, public awareness of animal rights and concerns over the country's international image have driven the anti-dog meat campaign. With growing negative sentiment towards the industry, farmers face challenges, and many believe it's time for the practice to cease. The government has set up a task force to consider the issue, but an agreement has not yet been reached. Denmark and Sweden are considering legal measures to ban protests involving the burning of the Quran or other religious texts due to security and diplomatic risks. While both countries value freedom of expression, they recognize that such protests benefit extremists and pose security threats. The controversial protests have strained relations with Muslim-majority nations, prompting Denmark and Sweden to explore ways to intervene in certain situations, especially protests near embassies. Both governments aim to balance their commitment to free speech while safeguarding national security and international reputation. Senior Russian official Dmitry Medvedev warned that Russia might resort to using nuclear weapons if Ukraine's counteroffensive, in conjunction with NATO, succeeds and leads to the loss of Russian territory. Medvedev, the deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, has previously made similar nuclear threats during Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. His recent remarks come after Russia's defense ministry accused Kyiv of attacking Moscow with drones, heightening tensions in the region. In Beijing's western suburbs, heavy rainfall caused flooding, sweeping away cars, and transforming roads into rivers. Despite evacuating tens of thousands, at least two people lost their lives and hundreds were trapped. The remnants of Typhoon Doksori brought record rainfall to the city of nearly 22 million, flooding hundreds of roads. The nearby city of Tianjin and Hebei province were also affected, leading to evacuations and dangerous river levels. Doksori caused widespread flooding in Fujian province as well, displacing hundreds of thousands of people. Former President Donald Trump's PAC, Save America, has allocated more than $40 million on legal expenses since the start of the year, doubling the amount spent in 2022. The PAC, funded mainly by small-dollar donations from Trump's supporters, aims to report its first half expenditures to the Federal Election Commission. Trump's team justifies the spending as legal challenges mount against him and his inner circle. Additionally, a new legal defense fund, called the Patriot Legal Defense Fund Inc. is being established to assist with the considerable bills. In a devastating attack on an election rally for pro-Taliban cleric Fazlur Rahman's party, a suicide bombing in Bahar, Pakistan, resulted in 54 fatalities and nearly 200 injuries. The Islamic State Group's regional affiliate is suspected to be responsible for the tragedy. As Pakistan mourns the victims, authorities vow to hunt down the perpetrators. Islamist groups' presence in the region adds complexity to the investigation, while condemning the attack brings together national and international communities.